I think this whole table tennis journey is a journey that I hold very close to my heart. Especially during the YOG, when I was there on the podium, looking at my flag being raised up. I realised that it wasn't just a sense of happiness, it wasn't just satisfaction from having achieved a dream. It's really about a sense of gratitude. It means a lot to me when my journey is not a, just a personal journey itself, but it's one that has influence on on the lives of others, it touches lives, it impacts lives. It gives me a great sense of purpose when, when I know what I'm doing is it's not just for me, but um, it helps people believe in, in their own destiny. What my cuckoo did um, after YOG. She collected all the newspaper articles and she did this for me. Well, when she was young, she is very playful and mischievous. She loved to sit on top of the sofa and look outside and try to engage people like shout auntie auntie and when the auntie look out, she'll hide. My mom and I share a very special relationship. It's not something that I would really like to describe in words because I feel like the beauty of it cannot be contained in words just by itself. I remember when I was 14, I was playing in the C Junior Championships and I was heartbroken after losing in the finals. She didn't talk to me about the game, she didn't blame me, she just sat beside me, watched me cry, just embraced me. At that time, when you lose a match, maybe you are very down. So whatever words that you say to them, console them or encourage them, I think it's no point. So usually I will write a card or a note to her. And she wrote me a card um, telling me how much she loved me, um, that it was okay to fail. I just remember feeling like having that kind of unconditional love was actually much better than striking gold. I am close to my sis. Uh, she used to take me out for ice cream rides in, late in the night. So that was when we were talk about um, every single thing. Fun at times, but sometimes when she cries, then it'll be very irritating. <laughs> <laughs> Love-hate relationship lies with all, most siblings, I guess. So sometimes we'll be very good and very close and we'll, we'll like to play together, but sometimes we'll just irritate <laughs> each other. Christy, where are you? Uh? I think there are a few entrances. Kalang Wave Oh, uh, where are you near? Yep, bye bye. Where shall you go? Okay, I thought she was very serious at first. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually fake one, you know. Cause, cause actually she's very funny. Maybe cause like game face, so you cannot really tell. We went to the same school. We got to know each other through church. One thing about her that people don't know is that she has wisdom beyond her years. She may be younger than me, right? But there are times where I talk to her and there's such wisdom about it. He's so right about certain things. And I'm like, oh yeah, okay, I can't argue with that. <laughs> yeah. I know like people see her as an athlete, so they, they would love like to see her succeed. But I want to see her succeed like not just in whatever she's doing, but as a person. Success as in like being happy. <laughs> don't act, la, really don't act. <laughs> <laughs> Ken Wei, um, Meng Yu, the senior players, they actually give me very good advice on how I can improve on my game. And I've actually learned a great deal from them. I think it's our place as Singaporeans to, to help them feel welcome. If you think about it, when, when you feel you're accepted, when you feel um, people welcome you. You just tend to want to be part of this more. You really have to be big-hearted. You accept them and help them get to know more about 
um, Singapore, about Singaporeans, the culture you have. At the same time, learn more about them, why certain things are this way, the certain values that they hold. Actually, I'm very proud of her. What she has done, she has uh, set a precedent for the local players that, you know, if they put in their heart and soul, they can also go quite far. Isabel Lee takes the point. And a beautiful point. I don't have any hard goals, but it will be really to, to take each step and see um, where my potential lies. Nobody knows, um, even uh, I myself don't know how far I can go, so definitely I want to push that. And Isabelle does it! This could be the biggest upset of this tournament. World ranked 130, Isabelle Lee, the defender, takes down Lee Ho Ching. World ranked number 20.